I'd like to start off with the legend of the Blue Bonnet. One of the better known legends tells the tale of a Comanche tribe suffering after a bitter winter. The medicine men knew they would have to sacrifice their most prized possession to appease the Great Spirit. Overhearing their conversation, a young girl decided she must sacrifice hers, a little doll adorned with blue jay feathers. After everyone went to sleep, she burned the doll and scattered its ashes in the wind. And in the morning, the tribe awoke to see the hillsides blanketed in blue. six species of the blue bonnets in Texas. In the spring of 1901, the Texas legislature got down to the serious business of selecting a state floral emblem and the ensuing battle was hot and heavy. One legislator spoke emotionally in favor of the cotton bowl since cotton was king in Texas in those days. Another young man from Uvalde extolled the virtues of the cactus so eloquently, noting the hardy durability of the plant and the orchid-like beauty of its flowers, that he earned the nickname of Cactus Jack, which stuck with him the rest of his life. He was John Nance Garner and later became Vice President of the United States. But the National Society of Colonial Dames of America in Texas won the day. Their choice was Lupinus subcarnosus, directly known as buffalo clover or blue bonnet, stated the resolution. And it was passed into law on March 7, 1901, without any recorded opposition. And that's when the polite blue bonnet war was started. Lupinus subcarnosus is a dainty little plant which paints the sandy rolling hills of coastal and southern Texas with sheets of royal blue in the early spring, but some folks thought it was the least attractive of the Texas blue bonnets. They wanted Lupinus texinus, the showier, bolder blue beauty which covers most of Texas and gives inspiration to many artists. So, off and on for 70 years, the legislature was encouraged to correct its oversight, but the wise salons of Capitol Hill weren't about to get caught in another botanical trap, nor did they want to offend the supporters of Lupinus subcarnosus. It's easy for you to say, right? And so they solved the problem with typical political maneuvering. In 1971, the legislature handled the dilemma by adding the two species together plus any other variety of blue bonnet not herefore too recorded and lumped them all into one state flower. Amongst the many things the, the legislature did not know then was that the big state of Texas is home to three other species of lupines. The Umbrella Clause makes five of them a state flower, and if any new species are discovered, they automatically will assume the mantle of state flower as well. There are now six species. First up, we have Lupinus perennis, Old Maid's Bonnet, also known as Sundown Lupine. This one is a medicinal plant and is widespread in the eastern part of the USA, from Texas, Florida, Maine, and Canada. The bloom is long, sparsely flowered, sometimes almost verticulate. Flowers can range from blue to pink, but are most often blue or bluish purple. I have not seen this one yet. I hope to photograph it in the future. Now we have Lupinus consinus, the tiniest version of the state flower. The annual lupine is found all over from the southwest of Texas, stretching to California and northern Mexico. Not nearly as assuming as its fellow lupines, 
This annual lupine features darker purple and red blooms and prefers to live in sandy soils. This desert dweller is a favorite among bees. They must really be rare because I had a tough time finding photographs on the internet of these. I do plan to go out and find these elusive beauties so I can capture their photographs as well. The third species I have not been able to record is Lupinus platensis, Dune Blue Bonnet. The Dune Blue Bonnet makes only a brief appearance in the Texas Panhandle, but nowhere else in the state. It is much more prevalent in Montana. Nebraska, Colorado, and parts of New Mexico. The dune bonnet is the only perennial species of the blue bonnet in Texas. It stands two feet tall and features light blue flowers with a dark spot. Now let's take a look at the three species that I have photographed. The following pictures are ones that I have taken myself. Lupina subcarnosus is also known as the sandy lamb blue bonnet. This sandy lamb blue bonnet has a slightly more muted color scheme and tends to have less densely packed flower petals, giving it a more sparse, willowy look. You'll find this variety of blue bonnet in south central Texas. I found these just south of San Antonio. This was a really fun trip. I spent a couple of days down in San Antonio just driving up and down all their county roads just to look and see what I could find. I found some really interesting sights and backgrounds to shoot these blue bonnets with. It was really fabulous. My fingers are crossed that I get to go back to this area this spring and see how their wildflowers are doing this year. Lupinus Havarti Big Band Blue Bonnet, also known as the Chisos Blue Bonnet. Lupinus Havarti stands up to three feet tall. It's found in the Big Bend region of Texas, and it has tall and gangly flowers adorning only the top four to eight inches of stem. This variety is so well suited to life in far west Texas that it all but refuses to flourish anywhere else. I've just returned from a trip to the Big Bend capturing these beautiful photos, and my new series journey through the Big Bend of Texas will start next week. Stay tuned, there's lots to see. There weren't as many blue bonnets this year down in the Texas Big Bend. It wasn't the record bloom they had last year, but I enjoyed it just the same. It was such a delight seeing these beautiful tall specimens. I was like a kid in a candy shop. Last but not least, Lupinus Texanus, my favorite Texas Blue Bonnet. This variety of Blue Bonnet is the most popular and most recognized as the state's official flower, with deep royal blue petals that are large, showy, and packed. This variety has more flower heads per stem which results in a bigger impact flower. Each stem can have upwards of 50 fragrant flowers featuring white tips that complement the dark blue nicely. Here they are starting out just as mere babies. These are the rosettes in green surrounding the blue bonnet. Keep in mind that this is macro photography so the plant appears larger than it actually is. They start out in a cluster no bigger than the palm of your hand and spread out and begin blooming 
and emit one of the most aromatic, wonderful smells that I've ever encountered out in the field shooting wildflowers. Yes, I'd say I am just a little bit partial to Lapinus texinus. Beginning in January, weather permitting, I go out and look at different samples of spots where I suspect there may be blue bonnets for the upcoming spring season. Sometime around March, you'll see the first blue bonnets blooming in town, which we call townies. Then they begin along the sides of the county roads beside the highways. I believe it's from the warmth at night and the dew in the morning that runs off of the highway onto the blue bonnets. Then with a little luck, maybe a little magic, but especially by God's grace, here come the fields of the beautiful blue bonnets. These are the fields that we photographers are just dying to get our hands on. And we need you to help protect our blue bonnets so that we can all enjoy these blue bonnets for generations to come. Did you know that the blue bonnet has to go to seed before the plant dies or it will not reproduce in the same spot? Don't pick the blue bonnets. It's really that simple. And also, don't stomp on them either. So, I guess it boils down to don't mess with Texas. Hey, I forgot to ask. Did you get your Enjoy the Journey mug or t-shirt yet? You can find them at the link in the description down below. Thanks for watching and be sure and leave a comment and subscribe. Most of all, enjoy the journey.